Funding for Reading Rainbow is provided by Country Inns and Suites, where you can borrow a book at our Read It and Return Lending Library and return it on your next day. Country Inns and Suites by Carlson, committed to literacy. And by a ready-to-learn television cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Education through the Public Broadcasting Service. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Butterfly in the sky I can go twice as high Take a look It's in a book Hi there. If you want to get a close-up look at some of your favorite Hollywood stars, then this is the place to be. But these stars are special. Every single one of them is made out of wax. Welcome to the Movie Land Wax Museum. <laughs> Here's a scene from one of my favorite movies, The Wizard of Oz. Hi there, Tin Man. Did you get that heart yet? I guess not. You know, some of these figures are so convincing. Well, you could actually mistake them for the real thing. When one thing looks exactly like something else, it can lead to some pretty hilarious situations. And that's just what happens to the unsuspecting characters in this book. Florence and Eric take the cake. Florence and Eric take the cake by Jocelyn Wilde, read by Julia Child. This is Rosemary Cottage, where Granny and Grandpa Mutton live. It's summer vacation, and Florence and her little brother Eric have come for a visit. This morning, Granny is very busy. The ladies from the little nibbling knitting circle are meeting here, and Granny must tidy up. Shall we help you with the flowers, Granny? That would be kind of you, dear. Florence and Eric want to help Granny get ready. Mother has told them to make sure they do everything they can for Granny and Grandpa. Just then, the telephone rings. Hello? It is Miss Lavinia Bleating. She's made her heavenly angel food cake for the knitting circle this afternoon, but now she's come down with the most frightful cold and can't come. Oh, take care, my dear, says Granny. What if I sent Florence and Eric for the cake? It's about time they had some fresh air. Good idea. I'll leave it in the hall, Miss Bleating replies. And tell Florence to walk straight in. The door will be open. Now remember, don't talk to strangers. <laughs> Miss Lavinia has spent all morning icing the cake with her favorite marshmallow frosting. At last, it's finished. 
she leaves the cake in the hall and goes upstairs to lie down. Achoo! 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 Poor Miss Lavinia doesn't feel well at all. A moment later, Lavinia's sister Muriel comes home. She's been out shopping for a new hat to wear to the ba ba of Seville, her favorite opera. Muriel is going to town to see it this evening. Oh, a visit of beauty. You are my heart's delight. Muriel loves the opera and has a very fine voice herself. She keeps it in perfect pitch by practicing in the bathtub every day. La 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 la. So when the front door opens, she doesn't hear it. Florence and Eric have come for the cake. Eric sees the box on the hall table, lifts it down, and takes it to Florence. Florence checks to make sure the cake's inside and puts it in her basket. She carries it herself. Eric might drop it. Promptly at 4.30, the taxi arrives to take Muriel to the station. Heavens, is that the time? In two shakes, she's dressed and ready to go. I'm off, Lavinia, dear. There is just her hat to put on. And what an elegant hat it is. Why, those cherries look almost real. She puts it firmly on her head. Oh, no. What a mess. This isn't her hat at all. It's a cake. A horrid, sloppy, sticky cake. Muriel lets out a very loud scream. <laughs> Meanwhile, the ladies of the knitting circle have been very busy all afternoon, knitting sweaters for the poor orphan lambs. And now it is time for some refreshments. Everyone is looking forward to a nice cup of tea and a slice of dear Lavinia's cake. It looks almost too good to eat. But, oh dear, how tough the cake is. How dry. Florence, dear, go ask Grandpa for the saw. Mrs. Woolly Jumper has just broken a tooth on one of the cherries. <laughs> and Mrs. Scrag is ch ch choking. There's no doubt about it. The cake is uneatable. But Florence thinks it makes a lovely hat. And Eric agrees. I guess you could call that book a case of Miss Caken identity. <laughs> Now, you might think that a cake could never look like a hat. Well, don't be so sure. Cakes come in some pretty surprising shapes and sizes. So how about it? If you could order a cake that looked like well, absolutely anything, what would you choose? I have a big, very big cheeseburger, the largest deck of mine, and the most juiciest. I would love a big cake that looks like a basketball. I'd take a pig. I'd like a big blue sports car. At Hanson's Cakes, there are bakers who can whip up cakes to match your wildest dreams. Today, the Hanson artists are working on four spectacularly edible masterpieces. See if you can guess what they'll be. They start out with butter, flour, and eggs, like any other cake. But at Hanson's, the more batter, the better.
Here's where the real magic begins, at the sculpting tables, where these masterpieces really begin to take shape. Baking at Hansen's is more than just mixing and cooking. It's a creative art. Watch these confections come to life. This one is beginning to look familiar. Mmm, that frosting looks delicious. I know what this is. <laughs> Aha, I think I can guess what this is going to be. I can almost hear it sizzling. A little mustard, some lettuce, and ketchup. And what's a cheeseburger without a pickle? And some sesame seeds on the bun, huh? Racing fans, the sweetest paint job you've ever seen or eaten.
I guess a talented baker can make a cake look like just about anything. Now, here's a double who needs no introduction. Absolutely incredible how realistic these look-alikes seem. From here, you can almost imagine what it would feel like sitting in the front row at one of Michael's concerts. You know, there are over 200 wax figures here at the museum, and new ones are being added all the time. In fact, there's a new one being made right now, and he's the star of one of my favorite television shows. It all started a few months ago. The first step was to take photos of me to use as a model for my wax double. This is David Robert Cialiti. He's the talented sculptor who creates the wax figures. Here, he's modeling my head in clay. He uses the pictures to guide him. Next, David spreads a soft, rubber-like material called silicone over the head to make a mold for the wax. He makes sure this pink, marshmallow-like stuff gets in every little spot. So, Dave, this is the wax that's going to turn into my head? That's right, pure beeswax. We're going to put it right here in the soup. Right in here, huh? Right in there. Just gently ease it in. Wow. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fill your mold up with, with hot wax. Now, how hot is this wax, Dave? It's about 170 degrees. What we're going to do is we're going to fill up this mold to the top of the neck. We're going to let it cool till there's like a three-quarter of an inch crust built up. Then we're going to drain off the excess. And what we're going to end up with is like a hollow wax shell. <gasps> and there we have you in wow. wax. Amazing. Ear holes, we have got to get the wax out of the ears there. And, uh... <laughs> Dave, this is amazing. He actually looks like me. Well, that's the whole point. We try. <sighs> Ooh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, spooky. Okay, so Dave, we're ready to put the eyes in now? Right, what we're gonna do, LeVar, is we're gonna burn out the eye socket and the wax head now. You can see. Wow, look at that. Okay, it's gonna start coming through. And then what we're gonna do, LeVar, is we're gonna place the glass eye into the head. When we're happy with its position, then what we're gonna do is wax it into place. Now you just, you allow the, the wax that's hardening to hold it there? That's what we'll do, and then what we'll do is we'll go in with that burning tool that I uh, did your eye with, and we will melt around the eye ah. so that it's frozen in place. <laughs> I can't believe I'm rummaging through a pile of teeth looking for something to go in my dummy's mouth. Ooh, how about these? Yeah. Dave, I think I found some teeth in my work here. You want to give them a try? Great, let's just slip them in there like we did with the eyes. Mm -hmm. And there we go. Good fit? Perfect fit, great choppers. What I'm doing is I'm implanting the hair. This is real human hair being implanted directly into the head. I'm using a special needle that's been cut to a specific angle so that it will catch anywhere from one to two or three hairs at a time as I'm plunging it directly into the wax cranium. Once the wax hardens around the hair, it's actually stronger than human hair is in, in an actual scalp. Okay, LeVar, let me get this measurement here. Mm -hmm. 16 and a half. Now, this is actually gonna be my body, right, Dave? That's right, that's right. And from the looks of this, I'm gonna have to make a couple of adjustments, mm. like about two inches worth. Well, how are you gonna do that? <laughs> oh, no! 
I can't watch. All right, all right, out of the way. This was taken from a mold of my own hand. There. Dave, I can't tell you how incredible this is. I mean, I'm standing eye to eye with this thing, and it looks and it feels like me. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you're pleased. I, uh, I'm always a little nervous until the star we're doing actually sees their figure and approves and, you know, has any input that they want. Let me put it this way. If, if you're pleased, I'm pleased. Well, I'm definitely pleased. That's great. I mean, it's almost spooky, you know? Well, it's the, those little touches at the end, the little sparkle in the eyes, little wetness to the teeth, to the lip, that, you know, once you hit that with a light and it all kind of just kind of sparkles, it really really takes it into a whole other realm. <laughs> and you should always brush after every meal. Well, we want to make sure your teeth are bright and shiny. Ah. It's done. That's it? That's it. You're finished? I'm done. Wow. Dave, I want to thank you. Oh, my pleasure. This has been just great. Want to do the honors? May I? Go for it. Just straight up. Wow. And on the head. <laughs> you know, I've always heard that two heads are better than one, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> well, if you'd like to fill your head with wonderful stories and new ideas, then here are three books that are head and shoulders above the rest. But you don't have to take our word for it. Hola, me llamo Lynette Lakai. Hello, my name is Lynette Lakai. I speak two languages, Spanish and English. And so does this book. It's called Uncle Nacho's Hat or El Sombrero del Tío Nacho. Uncle Nacho is a very unusual man. He speaks to his old hat. Strange. Uncle Nacho's niece gives him a beautiful new hat. But his problem is, what does he do with the old one? You can read this book in Spanish or English or both. You'll have lots of fun. I know I did. Adios, amigos. I love food. Well, if you do too, I must recommend my first cookbook. It's absolutely delicious. It's real easy to use. And it's filled with lots of great recipes. At the beginning of each recipe, there are pictures of the cooking utensils and ingredients. My favorite part of the book is when the pages come to life. This is my speedy pizza, and the best part of this is sticking it into my tummy where it's safe and sound. I'm Joshua, and I love this book. Have you ever been fooled by an illusion? Magicians are experts at that, and there's a strange and mysterious magician in this book. The Garden of Abdul Ghazazi by Chris Van Osbert. Alan, the kid in the story, has to take care of a dog named Fritz for the day. Now, Fritz is not your ordinary, everyday dog. He's always getting into trouble. Well, to make a long story short, Fritz runs away and Alan has to find him in a weird garden owned by a retired magician. You won't believe the trouble Alan has getting Fritz back. I'm James Herman, and this is an amazing book. There's no way you're gonna put it down, so pick it up. Well, here's the Reading Rainbow exhibit, but which is the real LeVar? <laughs> gotcha. You know, I see it, but I still don't believe it. What do you think? Does he really look like me? Gotta look sharp, pal. There'll be people coming through here any minute. Well, when I first heard I would have a wax look-alike, I didn't know what to think. But you know something? 
It's fun being two of a kind. As a matter of fact, I'd say I'm beside myself with glee. <laughs> oh, and that's not double talk. <laughs> You'll see me next time. Oh, no, 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 it's we'll see you next time. I'll see I'll you see next you time. time. I'll see you next time. Today's Reading Rainbow books are Florence and Eric Take the Cake by Jocelyn Wilde, published by Dialed Books for Young Readers. Uncle Nacho's Hat, adapted by Harriet Romer, illustrated by Veg Riceberg, published by Children's Book Press. My First Cookbook by Angela Wilkes, published by Alfred A. Knopf. The Garden of Abdul Ghazazi by Chris Van Alsberg, Published by Houghton Mifflin Company. Funding for Reading Rainbow is provided by Country Inns and Suites by Carlson, offering a family-friendly atmosphere and the Read It and Return Lending Library, where you can borrow a book and return it on your next stay. And by a ready-to-learn television cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Education through the Public Broadcasting Service. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.